All right. Um, I went ahead and um, replaced the potentiometer that used to be on the board. Somebody desoldered that and put some wires on it and then put a connector on the front. Um, and so what I did was put the uh, put a 10k pot back on the board. And uh, let's see here. Let's back up a bit so you can see what's going on here. Let me measure some volts. Whoa, that's loud. Um, and I'll turn that on so we can see it. Let me turn some power. And yeah, there we go. 202 volts. Um, and then I can I'll grab a screwdriver here. I can reach in. I can adjust it. So one. 180 to 220, yeah, easy to sh shift around. So I'll just leave it at 200. And if I ever have a need for a high voltage, um, yeah, I've got one now. So, uh, all right, let's turn this off so I don't kill myself. Get rid of that. I want to show you some other things that I've scrounged out of here. So yeah, this will go in my my bin. Um, so here's that. Here's that capacitor. This this ends up being a uh, 10 microfarad uh, polypropylene capacitor, 400 a 400 volt polypropylene capacitor. So yeah, lots and lots and lots and lots of foil in this thing. Wow, 10 microfarads. Um, yeah, this is a <laughs> big. That, that's the coolest polypropylene I've ever seen. All right. So another cool thing that was in there was there was the board that was in this thing. And then on the back section here, there was a uh, there was this board upside down over here, and it had a bunch of heat sink compound on it, and it was sucked down in, and it was a bunch of resistors with, with there's still heat sink heat shrink heat no heat sink grease I always want to say heat shrink heat sink grease uh, marrying this down there. So these are two watt resistors. I think these are two watt resistors. Um, and these are 510 ohms. So when you have 10 of them in parallel, it's 51 ohms, right? So this is a 51 ohm load uh, of many watts. Because uh, not only do you have a whole bunch of them, that spreads it out. You also have them on a big heat sink. That spread them down too. So that was, that was an interesting find. Maybe I'll use this uh, for a ham radio load or something. I don't know. Anyway, so that was that. Then there's this board which was the um, strange little board. I don't know exactly what it does. There's a couple uh, voltage regulators, LM317, LM317 with adjustments. So those are valuable, like, or not valuable, but I can use them. And uh, yeah, uh, just kind of some pulse shaping or voltage conversion or something on this thing, just, to, just as a trigger to the other uh, what is this thing here? Oh, that's a high precision uh, resistor, a 0.01% resistor. Wow, I wonder why that's in there. Anyway, um, yeah, again, that's his construction technique. All right, so those are those two boards. Uh, I pulled out some, some parts. Uh, these are the IFR, I, I mean IRF 450s. I think there's like like 500 volts at t at 12 amps. Um, so yeah, these are these are pretty cool. Got two of those. Interestingly, you know, I never quite understand this when when um, I take things apart, and they don't have matching transistors in it. Obviously, it was made at the same time, and. Uh, you would think they would have all the same, but this is an SD part and this is a Motorola part, and you know that one of them th thicker than the other, and one's on the ground. So yeah, there you go. They're always jumping around. Um, then I have some real fast diodes. These are cool. These are MUR fifteen fifty. This just super fast recovery diodes to clip these pulses that are happening. These high voltage pulses. Uh, then there's some little uh, MJE transistors. Those are generic. And I just cut these off because they're two N two 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 A's. I, I just like the little metal packages, so save those. Um, let's see what else. This is the uh, five volt thing, uh, and uh, I like the construction technique here. He he epoxied on these two 
standoff, so now it has uh, places for it to be bolted down. So that's kind of that's kind of that's kind of fun. A little bridge rectifier. So there's four four diodes and a capacitor. That's all this is. It's just four diodes and a capacitor. So it's not regulated. Um, yeah. What else did I uh, what else did I scratch? Oh, I wanted to talk about this thing. Yeah, that's what I wanted to talk about. So uh, let's see. We need to draw a picture. So I think most people know what a variac is, right? The big knob that you turn and you, you can adjust the voltage. And those are what's called an auto transformer. And so the way they work is that you have a winding. And uh, I don't like this marker. This marker is too windy. It's a fat marker. Um, that you put in, you know, 100 and 120 volts AC over here, and uh, this one seems wimpy too. I don't know why my pens are wimpy. Anyway, um, then over here on this side is a, is a wiper, okay? And so out. And then you can slide this wiper up and down, and so if you have it up here, it's 120 volts, and you have it down here, maybe it's only 80 volts. And then they continue the windings up. And so you can slide your, you can slide your, uh, your thing up. And does that make it go lower and up? Anyway, you can get a voltage range here, uh, less than 120 volts and more than 120 volts. Um, and that's the way, um, Variax work, right? So, um, yeah, fewer windings here, more windings here, you get more voltage. So it's higher voltages, lower voltages. Um, so the way that these are constructed is it's just one winding. And this wire is the same, okay? So it's not an isolation transformer. One of the wires just goes straight through, and then it shares these windings, and so they're kind of connected together too, in a way. And so they're not isolation. Um, well, that's exactly what this transformer is. It's an auto transformer. And so uh, what it looks like is one big winding, okay? And this one's labeled C. This is your common, okay? Let's see, let's see what Common. And then there are five, five taps, okay? One, two, three, four, five. There's these five taps. One of the taps is at 95, uh, 105, 115, 125 and 135. And those are all the taps, okay? So, if your normal voltage is 115 on your uh, bench, you can plug it on right here, okay? That's going in, and then you can select anything on the output. You can select it here, and then you get 95 volts out. Or here, you'll get 135 volts out. You get to pick one of these windings, but they share the common, right? Um, and so I think the way this was being used was it was bringing in 115 and output, outputting 135. So it had a little bit of voltage gain, right? Uh, where's my, here's my calculator. All right, so let's say it was, uh, uh, 135 and 125, it had an 8% gain in voltage, okay? It boosted the voltage by 8%. And maybe they had it wired down here and it was maybe it was more like 10% or something. But anyway, they, they had it wired like that. And then that went into this thing. Well, this was, this thing, you could probably tune it up to 250 volts or something like that. They couldn't quite get to their 300. They needed to get to their 300. And so he cheated and he ran this with a little bit higher voltage than it was intended for, okay? And so everything was kind of up a bit. Um, I think that's what he did. Um, but anyway, 
I'm not gonna do any of that stuff. Sounds a little bit dangerous, but anyway, I think that's what was used. But anyway, I've never seen one of these before. I know what an auto transformer is because of Variax, but uh, yeah, this is a uh, one that's just in uh, fixed fixed taps. Um, and again, if you're not familiar with uh, VA ratings, okay, this says it's 115 volts at uh, 150 VA, okay? So people might not be aware of what VA, VA is uh, volts times amps, otherwise known as watts, okay? But instead of using watts, they'll say VA for various reasons. But um, so if you have 115 volts, get out a calculator again, okay? So if we have 150 VA and we have 115 volts going in, we get 1.3 amps, okay? 1.3 times 115 equals 150 volts times amps, right? Um, so that's the way that's recorded. Yeah. Did I find anything else interesting in the uh, pile here? I don't think so. I don't think so. Don't have immediate use for this. Let me see what else I found in the pile here. I found some nice um, spray capacitors. I found some uh, uh, point, point 0.1 microfarad, 500 volts. Uh, yeah, lots of little screws and stuff. I always keep the screws. Um, yeah. I'll probably pull some of these things off, but uh, there's some solid tantalums here. Yeah, I probably should save these. Just use these at HP a lot. I don't just snip them off. Uh, there can be like a, a wet tantalum and a dry tantalum. And uh, these are uh, solid tantalums, so the tantalum is solid in there. And then they actually have a glass seal. You can see it on here. It's at, they're actually glass sealed, and these things basically last for last for ages. So pull one of those off. What are they? Uh, let's see here. What are they rated? Uh, 150. No, 33 microfarads. 33 microfarads at 35 volts. So nothing to, nothing to write home about. But uh, like I said, these will last forever, and they have really really good ESR values, right? Uh, tantalums. Very good. And I think the rest of this is garbage. Pull, pull the ICs off. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Quick little video of all of the uh, pilfering I got out of, <laughs> out of my little box here.